Hey, Force Center fans, great Star Wars discussions are on the way, but first let me tell you about Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast, let me explain. First, it's free, that's the truth, it's free. And there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, and Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more places. The list keeps on growing. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So get started today. Start your podcast. Get your voice out there. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy and directly via hyperspace to you. This is Force Center, the news and cues. I'm Ken Napsa. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw, and I'm happy to know that we are in the uh, cerulean swirl of hyperspace. That's really great and exciting. That's a beautiful word, and it is uh, <laughs> it is uh, a, a breathtaking view indeed, and we're happy to be here uh, talking uh, the news. We'll talk about how, uh, well, we expressed... Uh, we experienced a little hubris last week and <laughs> karma came to slap us in the face and we got some great questions. One that caused me to run to a visual dictionary last second to, uh, or visual encyclopedia. I always say dictionary. It's not a picture, <laughs> a book of words and pictures. It's an encyclopedia of Star Wars. <laughs> so anyways, all that to say, uh, let's get into it shortly. But first, let me remind you, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Over 180,000 times to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. A little bit later, as always, one of our Force Center recommends an audiobook we think you should try out on us. But the deals don't stop there, friends. No, the deals get better all the time, to misquote Lando Calrissian. We have another offer. It is from Inside Editions. They are a publisher of just a ton of great Star Wars books. Inside Editions is offering 35% off across their website with a special Force Center code. Uh, you can get this discount by entering the code FC35, or you can visit the website with the link, insideditions.com slash discount slash FC35. We are continuing to recommend a book that is coming out on May 4th, and that book is Star Wars colon Galactic Baking. Uh, Ken and I are lucky to have copies of this. Uh, I was telling my wife about it. I showed her the Puffer Pigs uh, pizza party uh, poppers. <laughs> That's not exactly the right. Uh, the, the Puffer Pig yeah, pizza. Yeah. I can't remember. There's another P. Puffs. Pizza Puffs, I think. Oh, yes. Anyway. Uh, my wife is like, we can do this. And my wife says, uh, we can do this. She's always very generous. Uh, she means she can do this. And I will uh, talk to her and be supportive and stay out of her way when necessary. So we might be having some um, puffer pig pizza puffs. <laughs> Love this idea. Love this idea. Love this idea. Yeah, yeah. So you can check it all out with the code FC35. Sorry, I was supposed to finish saying that. Uh, and I just got distracted thinking about pizza. But I'm back, Ken. I'm back. <laughs> You're back indeed. That's all right. It's all right. We're, uh, we, we are, uh, you and I average, um, what is it now? Six, five, six hours of, of four center broadcasting a week, which we're, if we contain ourselves, if we contain ourselves, um, we love doing it, but sometimes you just forget your place in line. You don't know where you are. You're just in the galaxy far, far away. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, uh, we've got some news, uh, coming up, uh, so shortly. Uh, if some of you are just here for that news, uh, I, I rebroadcast all these episodes on YouTube, but I know you might want to skip around. And yeah, maybe I should be diligent and put a time code in there. But I want you to hear our voices and just enjoy the ride. But we're going to be talking about the Bad Batch trailer in a little second. But before we do, we'd like to catch up with each other, talk about Star Wars adventures, life adventures, and how often they become intertwined. Joseph, how was your week and where did Star Wars fit in? Oh, yeah, there were definitely some uh, some life adventures, uh, nothing uh, nothing major specific, but, you know, uh, a lot of stress. Uh, stress comes from many different angles uh, <laughs> these days, and, and I felt almost every angle this week, but I did have some real joy this weekend, and that was partially because I just made time. I, I made the choice for joy, uh, really took Saturday all the way off, and Normally on Saturday morning, my wife and I have been watching uh, some Doctor Who. It's Doctor Who Saturday morning That's and great. then documentary Sunday morning. It's a real choice. And <laughs> it was such a weird conversation to have with my wife. We got up on Saturday and she was like, I'm ready to watch some Doctor Who. And it's like, I know. And that's wonderful. 
<laughs> but I need to watch some Star Wars. Uh, in particular, I wanted to watch something out of Disney Plus putting uh, uh, the vintage Star mm. Wars stuff up, right? Yep. Um, we talked about that in the news. Uh, it was a great reveal on Friday morning when I saw it that it was uh, that was the label they were using in the category, right? Because um, we talked a little bit about how are they going to kind of separate this out without getting too pedantic about what's canon and what's not canon? And it's great to see that they use the term vintage. So anyway, long story short, Saturday morning, uh, my wife and I watched the first two episodes of the Ewok uh, animated series, and it was just a great adventure. It was pretty amazing. Wow. wow. That's that a great choice to go there. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, you know, I just really miss the uh, the Saturday morning uh, cartoons vibe. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, I thought I just I wanted to watch something from it. And I didn't want to dive all the way into Clone Wars. I didn't want to dive all the way into the Ewok uh, TV movies. Um, but I was so fascinated with the Ewok animated series because I always forget, you know, we discuss a lot that if you were old enough to to see Empire Strikes Back in the theater and then imagine what you wanted out of Return of the Jedi that specific generation has lots of animus towards the Ewoks because yeah. we spent three years going, oh my God, Emperor Strikes Back is so dark and brutal. Vader's his father and he cut his own son's hand off and Boba Fett's the most mysterious guy ever. And then like, and teddy bears, come on. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But that was compounded by the fact that when Return of the Jedi ended, a lot of what we were offered for Star Wars to continue is more Ewoks. <laughs> yes. You know, the television show, the television movies, and then the animated series. So uh, I have long since got over my animus uh, towards the Ewoks. So I was really excited to rewatch these, which I watched when I was a kid and basically have no memory of other than being grumpy that there weren't lightsabers. Right. Um, right. And it was just so great to watch because on one hand, the, the first couple episodes, the Ewoks animated series are like, so just 80s cartoon right they just they've got all the same voices that you'd hear on he-man right and the yep. sorceress is doing the same like it sounds just like any other 80s cartoon yeah. but then at the same time it's it, watching it again it was way darker than i remembered it's about you know this sorceress trying the first episode is a sorceress trying to burn down the ewok soul trees out of just sheer vengeance and hatred of low gray <laughs> Uh, but there's these great, you know, they're great Lucas themes, right? About how every, every the forest and the Ewoks, the trees and the Ewoks are stronger together and they take turns protecting one another. And, uh, you know, uh, Wicked is definitely a, a Jar Jar like character of a misunderstood clumsy character and a lot of great things. There you go. Revisit it on a Saturday morning. Did you have a bowl of like Lucky Charms, or Fruit Loops? Complete it. <laughs> My wife made some pancakes, so it was extra special. Just that, great. That guy. That yeah, galactic pancakes. Uh, man, uh, it, it's so I don't know if we, you know, we want to find time. We'll talk about what we want to cover out of the vintage stuff that came out because we have already have so much we're trying to cover. But it was really fun to revisit, and I'm really excited to watch more of the vintage stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's my Star Wars adventure. I got as far as the vent, uh, the vintage landing page. I brought it up on Disney Plus to do some work, and then I ended up watching a, a twenty minute extra uh, piece on Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> <laughs> is that on Disney Plus too? It is. I don't know why. I I, I mean I, I I mean I had the icon was hovering over like Caravan of Courage, and. I had to do some other work, you know, it's just like, I just want this on. I, but I think I kind of felt like what you're describing of just like, this is a bit of a commitment. If I want to do this right now, I, I maybe don't, but I'd love to be in the star Wars galaxy. So yeah, I could have watched the Ewoks cartoon. Um, I just started poking. I was like, what are the, there's always the extras on the Disney plus. And sometimes like director and the Jedi's on there. Sometimes it's not indeed. It is the rise of Skywalker doc is on there. It's sometimes not. I don't know. I get confused. So I just was like, <laughs> Poke around. I've watched all the deleted scenes. I've been on all the movies and seen seen what's there. I get to see Moff Jar Gerard have a have a moment of uh, you know a, a moral dilemma uh, in his life. But I went to Empire Strikes Back, and there there's it's it's called a, like I think a conversation with the masters, and it is a twenty minute. It, it a lot of it seems to be almost extras or around the era of uh, the Empire of Dreams doc. It's like twenty minutes, and it's it's Irving Kirshner, Lawrence Kasdan, George Lucas. John Williams talking about empire. Wow. 
And I, to uh, for my life, I don't believe I've seen this before. And I, I don't know if it's new or just skipped it or it's like, or, if, you know, sometimes you're like, yeah, I know all the behind the scenes stories. I'll come back to that later. And it's like 20, about 20 minutes or so. And it's really fascinating stuff. It's not anything new. We've heard a lot of the stories. Yeah, you know, we've all done our Lawrence Kasdan impersonation talking about <laughs> Nah, It's all there. But it just sometimes the way you, when you want to just live in that Star Wars world, but not have to, you know, be watching the movies or breaking down themes. It just, I just love watching them make the movie. And I love hearing George you know, we can make a little poke, a little fun of uh, grumpy grandpa George and him at his, uh, you know, wife's charity live stream going, well, I'd have nothing to do with those Disney movies. You know, <laughs> um, it pops up a lot. But I also just George is charming to me in his own way and his flannel fl frumpled flannel way of just he talks all through this doc and he talks often about, you know, I'm not really a good writer. I needed John to fix come, Johnny Williams to come fix my movie. I, did, I needed another director and Irv Irving, I thought was overlooked by the industry. I need, you know, it's part of the charm. George is pretty sure of what he does and he's pretty sure of what he knows, but he's also, again, I always mention it because it's everything to me. It's, it's dude in food court eating Sabaro and that's George. <laughs> It's George walking in the back of, a, of that documentary, just going, "Whoa, what's this?" <laughs> George. Yeah, that big Bigfoot sighting like vibe of <laughs> only seeing him in profile. Yeah. Yeah, and so I just, I just really was celebrating the creator unintentionally of just watching him just kind of go, you know, I had this picture, and he explains same stories he tells around every campfire, but just to kind of really focus on him, just being like, yeah, you know, I created this like massive world that everyone loves, but I needed people to make it better with me. No, oh, that's so great. I'm definitely going to go watch that. Uh, that's a nice uh, quick lunchtime, 20 minutes. Um, yeah. And if you haven't, Ken, I, I, I would highly encourage checking out the Ewoks animated series. There are some okay. joys in that first episode, in, in particular, the the different interpretation of uh, Paplu and Tebow alone <laughs> <laughs> is worth your time. Look, my, my you know, my inter interpretation of Paplu is that he likes to drink too much and owes everyone money. So if that's lines up, uh, I'm there for it. If, if it it's kind of that, but older. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's just say it. In, it involves the term "drop the sack." There you go, everybody. <laughs> there you go. A very, very weird and delightful thing that Ewoks animated series, and I look forward to uh, to chatting off air uh, mm -hmm. about what all we want, how we want to visit the the vintage uh, collection, and when. Uh, when indeed, when indeed. So there is Star Wars in our regular lives. Now let's talk about. The news. All right. So last week we were so happy. We were so just thrilled that the Kenobi casting news dropped before we recorded our episodes on Monday morning here. And we just, uh, Joseph, we got caught up in our own kind of uh, hubris. Like I said, our favorite four center word, but just, we believe that we'd gotten away with one. <laughs> yes. If hubris could also be a petard, we were hoisted on our hubristic petard. Uh, yeah. So a lot of great news came out the second we were done recording. So the tradition survived. Yeah. And we thought we even had that moment of, should we, uh, should we maybe record a special force in a react? Nah, we'll just wait. So here it is. Our look, our reaction, a little bit of a breakdown of that bad batch trailer that dropped last week. So we're going to dive in into this uh, little over two minute look at the upcoming uh, season, first season, first or special event series. I can't even remember, to be honest, of the Bad Batch. Joseph, what are some of your overall thoughts before we dive in a little, uh, a little closer? I really enjoyed the trailer. And I think uh, what I probably enjoyed the most is that it was this great mix of just flavor of just reminding you yeah. who is on the team. Uh, what's their fun sort of shtick that makes them individual and different and interesting. What is their kind of, what's kind of like the mood and the energy of like the, there are real iconoclasts who do things their way and like mm -hmm. smashing things and kind of reminding you of that vibe also just confirming a lot of things about what the show is yeah and uh, look it, it looks beautiful and i know they're they're saying uh, you know go out and buy a 4k tv for this one i'm on it i'm on <laughs> it trying to do that uh, it looks beautiful great pacing uh, yeah a, a reintroduction of the characters for some and an introduction of the characters to many and that's something that's uh the trailers need to do so uh, I love that. Love the energy, the vibe, the look, the feel, all those kind of cool little buzzwords. It's all there. But I think what uh, I really want to get to, Joseph, is, is what it 
showed and like you said, confirmed. And this kind of makes it very clear. We got a little Tarkin up top. This makes it clear that the Bad Batch has become enemies of this new state. And that's something that, again, not surprising, Joseph, but just feels right. Yeah, no, I mean, we talk a lot about uh, speculating responsibly and, and it, uh, a big part of the fun of Star Wars is uh, speculating and then we want to be able to uh, let it go if it turns out the creators have a different story in mind. So with that caveat, I will say that I, this is one of those moments where I had hopes, I had dreams, and it was really great to have them confirmed. I wanted the Bad Batch to oppose the Empire uh, immediately. You know, I didn't want it to be a story, a slow burn story of them trying to work with the Empire and eventually realizing this wasn't right, I like that this is going to get right into the heart of the what, what they have always represented to me thematically, which I think is, is really drawn out in the Season 7 Bad Batch arc of Clone Wars, is that they are this great epitome of this uh, Star Wars uh, appreciation, a thematic appreciation of the power of the individual and the power of the unit, but in particular... Uh, this organic approach of they are individuals. They work together, but they are not, you know, standard clones. They are really different. They are really who they are. And to have them opposing the Empire just as it emerges and the Empire is really focused on rigidity, mechanization, control, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, when I talk about the this theme that I really love of the the organic versus the mechanical, go all the way back to a new hope. It's so symbolized in the, do you use the targeting computer or do you trust the force? Do you trust the instincts? And uh, I see that, that theme get explored in lots of different ways in Star Wars and, and just based on who the characters are in the Bad Batch, that's so to me what the theme was crying out to be. If you're going to tell this story of this super flowing organic group at the beginning of this rigid empire, that's what it should focus on. And I really love that it felt like that theme was confirmed and the state of events that would highlight that theme was confirmed. Yeah, and this comes out of those episodes in season seven that we finally got to see. And you you, you feel, I love the moment in the trailer where Tarkin's basically saying, man, they're really good, but a little bit of uh, unique personalities and individualism in there. Don't like that. <laughs> we um, can't have that. Can't have that. And, and that to me is going to, Lend, lend, uh, lend these characters. It's gonna. It, what, what am I trying to say? It, it, it's it, the show's gonna be able to go to the ground level with these four or five characters uh, and an expanding cast, and really kind of talk about and analyze that switch from the Republic to the Empire and and what people feel about that, especially if you were part of the cog and part of the machinery that maybe helped turned it there. And I think the Bad Batch in the at the end of the day is a really just a, it's an intriguing group of, of characters to explore that because they come from, you know, they are like each other, they're clones, but they've clearly just developed their own personalities, their own view. And, and, and even, you know, going back to the season seven episodes just are so different than the clones that, which was part of the struggle there. So to take those characters and dump them in the middle of this new empire while you're trying to figure it out and trying to figure out who you want to be, um, uh, the, the, the group and the individuals and where you go. I, I, I think it's a perfect mix. And that's something I, I got to tell you, I just, I wasn't super excited at that news back in the day. Even the rumors weren't getting me super excited. It wasn't that I didn't like those episodes. I, I like Wrecker a lot. I think he's a great, fun character. These are, these are totally 80s G.I. Joe characters to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. That speaks to my heart. Um, but to be able to know that this looks like where they're, where they're going with it. Again, in a general sense, it could go many different directions but i just like that i think it's going to work really well yeah i think this i totally agree with all that and i think all of the little details it, it that were either revealed for the first time or were highlighted uh in this trailer all speak to you know the power of this show isn't just the fun of the the bad batch characters it's really spending time in this specific era of the right after the Republic becomes the Empire and, and that there's a lot of really interesting things to explore in that exact moment. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Like the dime dropping. Love it there. So yeah. uh, so we knew about Fennec Shand. Um, we're, I think we're excited for Fennec Shand to have a, a little part in this show. And again, uh, you know, I'm not anticipating uh, all these characters to be main characters with the Bad Batch, but she's going to be there. But now we know we've got some quality Tarkin time coming, at least uh, a good way uh, to launch us. And, um, this uh, kind of reveal, Saw Guerrera, Saw Guerrera coming back. Uh, uh, what do you think there about Tarkin and Saw? And then we'll dive in a little bit more into Saw. 
Yeah, no, I'm I was very excited to see Saw. You know, you and I just uh, to see Saw. Uh, you and I just uh, just did that uh, big episode, kind of looking back at Rogue One. And I, we were really talking about how Saw is this character who's just poised to perfectly reverberate out into Jeff different books <laughs> and yeah. movies and animated shows. And he just he makes sense to pop up, and he again makes sense to pop up here is kind of almost like the the first loudest most violent rebel you know you've got the political side of the rebellion with uh with mothma and bail and you've got the eff it let's start blowing stuff up now side with saw so it really makes sense that he would reach out and go you are individuals you have every reason to not like the empire you should start blowing stuff up yeah and voiced by andrew kashina who of course voiced him in the clone wars Back in season five. Now, I love when Forrest Whitaker comes back and voices the character. I, I think we talked about that in the Rogue One episode. I love Forrest's uh, kind of, um, you know, uh, just loves Saw, loves playing Saw, loves exploring Saw. But I, I'm excited about this. Andrew Cascino, um, not only getting to come back to the role, which is always kind of fun, but just it, it's right for the time. It's appropriate for the time coming, uh, you know, so close to the Clone Wars in terms of uh, just in the story. So I'm excited there. To see Saw, and you're right, and, and, and Saw always brings with him that question that we that, that, that you know that kind of popped up in that trailer that we actually didn't see in the movie uh, Rogue One there of uh, you know what will you become? Uh, I, I love that. I love that. That's kind of what he's going around asking the galaxy. You got some choices. What are you going to do? Here's a blaster. Yeah. You want this? Tell me. And I think that might be a little bit of what the actual sort of crisis and question is for for Bad Batch of mm -hmm. do they just become mercenaries are they you know a, a uh, five now with omega six group version of han solo saying screw it we're out for ourselves or you know are they going to hit back against the empire you know yeah. um and also i think there's there's we'll get into omega obviously but i think the yeah, yeah. In, in the great solid guerrera uh, question of uh what would you what will you become mm. i think there's also this clone question of what is the what is the world for clones now? And do they feel a responsibility to find other clones like themselves who have been rejected by the Empire? That's a that's a real real good uh, question and, and something again we, we try to hold on to our expectations. But the the the, the turning of the chapter and, and and the changeover, man. I mean, we know the clones get phased out, and just how you deal with that, and are you going to let that happen? And 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 are, are there parts uh, you know? Parts of the Bad Batch soul, maybe as individuals or as a group, that just maybe maybe want to go hide, maybe want to go run, and 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 or not fight in the big cause, but fight for their their clone brothers or something out there. I, I think those are big questions that are on the table. Yeah, and I I think uh, the way you phrase that really made me think of their reality of like, well, you were you were uh, you know created to be weapons you're very different kind of weapons and you've always had this you know this structure this government that that points you and says go be a weapon over there and now you're you right. still clearly at least wrecker <laughs> likes being a weapon yeah. so but now they get to choose where they point themselves yeah and wrecker would be a great pro wrestler a great belly to back suplex in the middle of this fight <laughs> there uh, so we'll see how he does there uh you mentioned uh, this character we get to meet a new character we revealed to be omega um, young blonde female clone question mark. So this is, uh, this character is already as, as is the star Wars discussion worlds want has inspired many theories, many questions, many of them, uh, wild, but all of them fun. So let's dive into the Omega of it all. Joseph, we don't know much, but what are your thoughts on uh, Omega and, and who this uh, character could be? Oh, it's clearly Captain Phasma. No, um, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the young Palpatine clone. I saw that too, and that, that works for me. There you go. That's the one. That's what I. Yeah, you know, I, I have not been uh, into the um, the depth of of looking at anybody's theories on on who or what. The the thing that I reacted to is just you know the name Omega. You know, it yeah. being it's the final letter of the the greek alphabet you know often used to denote the last or the end the ultimate limit of a set uh, is what the dictionary told me uh <laughs> to confirm that i was not just conflating things from too many years of uh, uh digesting pop culture definitions of omega but no that's the actual definition um it, I, I think for me what i thought is this is a story of the end of the line of of clones of you know there isn't enough of Django's dna left but it's Django's dna mixed with something else and yeah and is omega you know, what the next generation of clones would have become had the Republic kept ordering clones from Camino. Mm. 
Ooh, yeah. That's and, and I think that um, it just uh, to me, it just it feels right, you know, for Star Wars and for storytelling to have this like uh, Omega is this symbol of uh, of renewal of what the next generation would have been, mm. uh, but is now just in an orphan, uh, right. you know, taken up by uh, the Bad Batch. Um, so all that stuff with Omega is really interesting to me uh, thematically. And then there is also uh, this this uh, this I'm really curious to see how uh, this story of, you know, a young, a younger, l- more innocent looking person, you know, traveling around with a, a rugged, damaged, violent people like <laughs> that's a coming of age story. We've now seen a couple of times. Right. It's yep. definitely some Mandalorian vibes. I, you know, I would argue that it's a little bit with Rebels. You know, Ezra is definitely the young coming of age story, meeting people who are really new mentors who are really struggling um a little bit with Kaz and resistance we're used to the yeah. coming of age story in star wars uh, so i'm really hoping that this relationship between the bad batch and omega is very specific to this time that it's about being a clone that maybe it's this is a story of the bad batch just saying hey, okay kid you're coming in with us and we're going to teach you how to fight <laughs> We're going to teach you how to be yourself and just like really like imprinting on this kid what they think the kid should be. Yeah. Look, and it's a it's a trope. It's a it's a tactic. It's a it's a tool. The point of view youngster. Yep. And, you know, it it, it works for a reason. Ah, Ahsoka. Right. I mean, Ahsoka shows up. Hi, I'm I'm precious and precocious and there's a war on. Um, I, I think it can work. And I, I'm, I'm going on the record saying that, uh, you know, wild theories aside, which are always fun. And yes, her hair, Omega's hair does look a little like Palpatine and Phantom Menace. Um, and finally, Ray's mom revealed, right? No, I, I do think it is just an original character as far as a clone or a mixed clone. If you, I think your point of, is, is taken of Django, hey, what else can we uh, splice into this uh, DNA line? There could be a lot, a lot going on with that. But I do think this is an original character that, uh, it's going to be there right in the middle of, of what, you know, I'm the last, what I'm going to be tossed aside. Uh, where do I fit in? And do I want to go with, with these, uh, these, uh, like you said, violent damaged individuals. Um, and clearly it looks like that happens. Uh, I do believe we get a little bit of Rex in that one shot over a, a down, uh, down bunch of down damaged, uh, uh, Republic cruisers. Uh, we do, we do. But, and that also makes me wonder of like how much of this is whole show since we have omega and rex that this is going to be be wrestling with what is the future of of clones if we're yeah. not going to be with the the republic anymore or the empire right and yeah and how it's not just simply should we rebel right it, it's literally you know, for an animated program where clone wars is never and rebels uh and resistance let's make sure let's give resistance its respect never shied away from those deep very dare I say human themes. I, I think I think Omega could help uh, really explore that, and while also being just a new young character to to pull in maybe younger viewers, it, it does work. It does work. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm I'm very excited by uh, by all the possibilities, and and there's a part of me of like uh, you know maybe this is about uh, establishing a, a clone refuge planet ultimately. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Let's see where uh, where Rex got the idea to find Gregor and Wolf and chill. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, any final thoughts on the show, the characters, action we saw, potential themes before we uh, move on here, sir? Uh, no, no, no. I think uh, I think I'm still really excited about the uh, the characters and uh, the era. I think having so many characters show up, having Fennec and Saw and mm-hmm. Rex in this trailer and obviously, you know, Tarkin uh, still yeah. there, too, I think does make me excited about other characters that could appear that's always a fun game for us as Star Wars fans to play. Uh, but I think there are a lot of characters floating around that, that could really add value to the actual yeah. narrative of the world they find themselves in. You know, I think uh, I think Dryden Voss, because I think this is a time when the, the criminals, uh, the syndicates are going to be on the rise. You know, yeah. I think, is there room, uh, because this is a re- if this is a show about wrestling, what it is to be a clone, is this room to have the, the you know, Clone Wars story that was going to be of Boba Fett young Boba Fett putting the armor on for the first time, you know, mm. things like that are possibilities that excite me. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I love this era. I love the time. I love exploring that changeover, you know, where everyone woke up the next day and had new uniforms. I, I, I think it's, I think it's really important to the star Wars story. Uh, and I am uh, pleasantly surprised to just everything they've revealed this trailer included. 
Um, maybe most of all that I am, I'm more excited for the bad batch themselves, the era I could totally be like, yep, I'm in for it. I have to admit, I was, I was not uh, super excited by the bad batch. I'm more excited than uh, I've ever been. And uh, Joseph, my excitement does not have to uh, linger because on May 4th, <laughs> well, bad batch will debut with a 70 minute episode, man. That's a, that's a big, that's a coming out swinging. Yeah, that's that is, you know, the total opposite of some of the uh, Disney Plus content that's been a little shorter, you know, and, and people want more. Um, yeah, I think final thing for me, I'll say is, you know, we, we as always, we talk about some of kind of the, the thematic ideas and some of the, the depth. But I think for me, I also just want to pull back and like, I'm really excited for the surface <laughs> because yeah. these characters are fun, like charming, interesting you know, uh, action heroes. And I am really excited to see all of the fun, weird Star Wars action. Yeah. You know what? I, you know, I want to keep, keep the conversation just, just going here, but you're right. I, I, I always, uh, it whiz bang, use that term whiz bang a lot. I, I, I need that. And th- I'm already seeing that. And that's going to be part of the fun too. It's, it's that uh, full, ex- the full Star Wars experience I think will be on display. Exactly. Very excited for it. There you go. All right. Other thing that was dropped, uh, going to the High Republic era, we have a new original audio drama on the way. This one is uh, written by Kevin Scott, who's just been, uh, he's been one of the better Star Wars writers the last few years across many different uh, platforms and mediums, this we know. And he is the writer on Tempest Runner, a story that uh, will be led by Niall Tempest Runner, Lorna D. So jump in right there, Joseph. Thoughts on this new story focused on a leader of the Nile as she looks over at her shoulder at threats from the Jedi and other Nile. Yeah, no, I really enjoyed Lorna D in uh, Light of the Jedi. I really like the shtick that her name, uh, that her ship was just her name. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a great detail to just be like, you want to know who I am? I'm the kind of person who just names their ship after myself. Um and I'm, I think this is a great way to give us uh, perspective into the Nile to really focus on one specific leader. So I think this is a really great idea. Yeah, absolutely. Look at me. I'm Lorna D. This is really. <laughs> that, that is also stuck in my head. So thank you for just getting it out there. <laughs> Taking over the galaxy all for me. I think what I love about this is, is, um, is, is kind of what you said there at the end of just getting able to explore. Um, the new Nile, as as we're really still diving into this era, as we're still there, you know. So, I want to know more about them, and I don't want to. I don't want to celebrate them. I don't want to champion them. I don't want to make them. Well, they have a point. I want to just see how how dangerous they are, how people can um, fall into the system, but rise and want to stay there, and 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 just uh, I'm intrigued by this all for all for one. <laughs> none for all type of uh atmosphere going on there there they are more interesting than even i thought again this is my theme today of i was uh, kind of excited now i like it more i really do like what i've learned from the now so far so i think you know the focus on that's going to be interesting and kevin scott i really trust him right now to handle that stuff yeah the the leaders in particular like the tempest runners having to balance this philosophy of you know, get, whip all of your followers into a frenzy of like, we are the Nile together. Uh, we we bond together and take whatever is ours. And then also, by the way, the way you get more within the Nile is to stab each other. But we are together, but also stab one another. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's this great yeah. sort of torturous uh, uh, view of, of living with those kind of contradictory thoughts, but needing your followers to hold on to both of them. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, This is uh, what now? What was my count? Third original audio drama in this new kind of era. Dooku Jedi Lost and the Afra stuff. Uh, Has the audio drama format worked for you? Uh, And has it worked for us as as a collective at Force? (laughs) I guess is the other question. Yeah, I'm really excited to see uh, the audio drama uh, continue to be explored. I think that there is an intimacy in it that it it just happens when you are literally hearing the characters voices and i know you can get that from audiobooks but uh so far both of the um audio dramas as opposed to just audiobook versions of, of novels um have really had this element of getting to true like heartbreak that uh mm-hmm. they've been structured and and i and i kind of think this will be structured uh similarly where we have a a great whiz bang star wars story that is kind of in the present drawing us forward forward um but then characters 
reflecting into these past memories of the of the traumas that shaped them and the people that were close to them that they almost had but they lost Mm -hmm. and both of the both of the dramas have been structured that way and i i think that this one will be too i think this will be about lorna d going on some nile adventure as the description says you know fighting jedi fighting off competition from other nile but then i think we're going to get that flashbacks to like what what broke her? What made her like this? You know, what were, what was that moment where she could have made a different choice? And I think the audio dramas, you can do all those things in a, in a book, in a television show, but it's the intimacy because it's this yeah. specific character whispering into your ear their secret trauma. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well said. Oh, good description. Uh, yeah, I, I like that. And I, I want to love them more than I have only because it's such a me thing of putting in my, my headphones and my AirPods or whatever the kids call them these days, heading out for a walk and just forgetting I'm listening to it. <laughs> As I just look at the clouds. What do I got to do today? This, this walk is fun. Oh wait, Star Wars is on. Um, so this is a personal challenge for me. And, and I, I know I'm probably not alone, but the other two haven't hit me as much as I maybe wanted to, wanted them to. And I know, and I have, like, I have uh, the, 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 the hard copies now. They, they've released the scripts in book form. I, the Afro one just uh, landed in my lap the other day. And I'm going to revisit them because I really love, love all the things presented. But you, you, you remember you, when you and I reviewed Duke of Jedi Lost, there's a giant plot point I missed. I completely <laughs> missed. I was like, what? Oh, man, because I was probably walking too close to Del Taco in my neighborhood and got distracted. So this is, I'm excited to see this uh, uh, format continue. And now it's a real challenge for me to, to uh, uh, just take it in a little bit better. And, and that's the only thing I, I think about when I hear a new audio drama is coming. It's uh, time to concentrate, Kenny. Time to concentrate. No, and, and I'm with you with that on that. I, I have a long history of uh, enjoying audio dramas. I remember the first time on in just a public, uh, or not a, just a radio station, I heard uh, the old radio serial, The Shadow, and I was like hooked. Um, yeah, yeah. But my life and the uh the the brain training from social media yeah. <laughs> means sometimes like it's hard for me to just listen to something you know yep. um so i do have to focus and i sometimes don't retain it as well so i'm really excited to revisit uh dooku jedi lost in script form because then i think the story will really uh coalesce for me so i'm with you that it is mm-hmm. it's sometimes a, a challenge for me to to focus and retain as much yeah but when I'm listening, I do enjoy so much of the different experience. And especially since it, it seems like they're committed to, to releasing the script versions yeah, yeah. Um, consistently. Uh, so everybody has access to them, which is great. And, and for people like you and I who, who can enjoy the audio, but maybe it locks in with mm. the script form. I just really want the audio dramas to continue because I want there to, I want, this is such a great way to explore mm. different parts of, of Star Wars, you know? And, and I can see a world where, if this gets more popular, you know, eventually this is a way to, you know, Adam Driver's not going to, you know, be de-aged to play 16-year-old right. Ben Solo, but maybe he'd do an audio drama. Like, the audio dramas could open up some really great possibilities. You're so right about that. And a yeah, different conversation to have, a, um, you know, maybe another show, but just the era of information we're in and everything moves so fast, and I'm all for fast pacing. But, like, even with music, I, I, I have had to really remind myself lately, like I love the band Haim and I'm like, their, th- their last album, Women and Women in Music Part 3, I'm like, I've listened to all the singles. I haven't sat down from song one to the last song to take in the album like I used to do. I, I got to force myself to do that these days just so I can appreciate things a little bit more. And this is part of that. I think you're right to touch on, you know, it's easy to sit down for a movie. It's easy to sit down on your couch and watch a TV show. It's easy to get distracted though all across the format so absolutely all right that's also what ken did this past weekend just sit and listen to a heim album all right uh (laughs) there you go this next headline the three legends novels are getting republished as essential legends from delray a new collection called essential legends has begun uh delray will publish new paperbacks i'm saying republished but their new paperback trade paperback Trade paper deck, uh, paper deck, paper <laughs> deck, I think is a creature that probably chased someone in the Clone War episode. Paperbacks um, of Heir to the Empire by Corth, Timothy Zahn, Darth Bane Path of Destruction by Drew Carpetian, and Shatterpoint by Matthew Stover. These will be released on June 15th. Each book will have new covers. More Legends books will be added to this Essential Legends collection in the fall. So, Joseph, diving in, uh, what do we think about these these specific books and then the re-releases overall? We'll discuss in a sec. 
Oh yeah, so the, these specific books, I think this is a great uh, selection. You know, I, I love. Mm. Uh, we'll, we'll get into the big picture, but for this specific selection, uh, of course, anything like this, you, you got to lead with Heir to the Empire. So I'm really glad that they're doing that. Mm. Uh, both the Darth Bane and Shatterpoint have been on my list of like, ooh, if I could get the time, the precious time, and revisit some legends, th- those books were high up on those lists. Um, I still remember so many details for my one reading of Matthew Stover's novelization mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, Revenge of the Sith, which I, you know, I was super busy in 2005 and I, you know, read quietly <laughs> so as to not wake Sarah uh, at 2 a.m. And I still remember details of that book. So I'm, I'm really, and I've just been on a Mace Windu kick where I've been thinking about him a lot. So Shatterpoint's high up there for me and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm really happy to see that one. Yeah, I, uh, you know, Heir of the Empire just uh, seems... Um seems natural to go there and, and pay pay homage to it uh, but also to to revisit that uh i've read path of destruction and i've talked about that before like um my old pal uh harloff who loves dark disturbing star wars stuff like darth bane kept uh shoving him in front of my face i said fine i'll read it and i loved the first one i really did and then new canon exploded uh it was 2014 and i was like i'll finish that series another time i never got to it it's good it's really good um, and I think it's intriguing. I don't mind getting a little dark, getting a little gritty and exploring the dark side. I, I, I don't like um, I don't think these ne- books necessarily do that, but I don't like um, glorifying the, the bad guys in Star Wars too much because we do that naturally on our own because they got the cool capes and toys. I, I get it. Um, so this might be a, a chance for me to revisit this series. Um, ahead of any other content. I'm not saying there isn't any Bane content coming, but it seems natural that they might get to that type of character or get to that character specifically. So I'd love to revisit that. Shatterpoint, you're right. I I don't remember Shatterpoint too much, but Matthew Stover is, I, I you know, I think he's a, he's a name that's well regarded by Star Wars fans, longtime Star Wars fans who were there that era. And you're right, that Revenge of the Sith novel, I'd love to revisit. Uh, I need to track it down. I have that and Attack of the Clones in some box somewhere that I can't. <laughs> uh, I found the Phantom Menace one. Um, so I want to revisit that too. So good choices on these specific books. The idea of Del Rey saying, hey, you like the Legends, right? So let's uh, let's give you a new fancy cover and more on the way. Joseph, uh, what do you think about that? I think that's great. And, and this is a part of Lucasfilm 50th, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know what? You're so right. I did forget that kind of part of it. It's, it's a little bit of the angle, yeah. Yeah, which I, I think is great. The the when they announced that we're going to celebrate the fiftieth anniversary of Lucasfilm, you know, we were both a little like, okay, what exactly does that mean? And I like that we, we've seen of that it's kind of a little merch here, a little uh, action figure here, a little books here. That it's celebrating kind of everything that grew out of uh, of Lucasfilm and and Star Wars. I think it's really great to celebrate legends. Um, obviously, uh, I know there's a ton of fans of legends. You know. Um, and, you know, uh, some some disappointment about the the canon being wiped out. And I think any chance that we get to to invite everybody to come play and be happy about Star Wars. If you're a big fan of Legends, great. Let's celebrate it. And I also think, you know, it's in the press release, the way they described it about the power of Star Wars is that it one of the powers of Star Wars is that it's lucas's vision but it so inspires other people Mm -hmm. to play in that sandbox and i think taking a moment or an initiative like this to celebrate that idea and highlight that idea is really great as we're heading into all these disney plus shows and you know different directors doing different uh movies with uh, patty jenkins and taika waititi we're heading into the future of star wars isn't like it was back in you know 2014 of like jj abrams taking the ball you know Mm -hmm. it is going the the screen version of star wars is now going to be like the publishing version used to be of a bunch of people are playing in the sandbox yeah that's yeah and and that's a it's a good reminder even for me uh, as i always be honest i just try to be honest with my struggles with some of the legend stuff and 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 um while also celebrating it. And I think the 50th Lucasfilm kind of theme, I'm glad you, you reminded me to, to, to include that in this story, which is, <laughs> I think it, it, it really just takes the pressure off. It's just now looking back. Cause now you could even celebrate Ewoks cartoon or the caravan of courage, or, you know, just Teak. You can just celebrate Teak. Uh, <laughs> it's all part of it. And it's all part of our shared journey. And, and these are a very key part of it. I mean, I, you know, I can't, I can't give air to the empire enough credit 
for being there when everything else seemed to be going away for Star Wars. Um, that was one of the first things out of the gate. I think some of the West End games, I think, uh, deserve some credit too. But um, it was a thing of just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, Star Wars, we're back. We're back in this thing. So happy to celebrate it. Happy to uh, roll around in the sand there, Joseph. Yeah, and I don't know exactly what's going on with the West End games, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did something with the 50th mm. because, yeah, a ton of the, you know, just the world building of Star Wars is, is from those games. It really is. It really is. And I, I did not spend a lot of time with those. I, I, I think you did more than I, um, but it would be fun to try to find a way to revisit that or just visit that for me. For me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Time is a challenge. Uh, yeah. my, my last thought on this yeah. uh, it is it really kind of amuses me because uh, I'm really interested in reading the, the Darth Bane books. Mm -hmm. But uh, and I want to, uh, you know, uh, celebrate this new initiative with the new covers. But like, if you start a series, you got to put the rest out with the matching cover. Come on. Many of us are completionists. I can't have, you know, different Darth Bane uh, books with covers that don't match. So if you're putting out this one, you got to put out the other. Yeah. Or different sizes, because I think I have two. I have two. I have the first and the third of this Bane trilogy. I never got the second one again. Uh, the, the explosion of Can-Am. And they're different sized. And I, I'm not a I'm not a super, you know. Uh, you know, I, I don't even don't mean never mean to make light of OCD, but my girlfriend suffers from it. But like, I I stare at it often. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that there is a desire to have like, ooh, look at them all neat in a row. Mm -hmm. They're a part of a whole, you know. Uh, yeah. So, and I I don't know. There, it, this was just a classic. Like, let's pick three novels yeah. to celebrate. One of them is a standalone. The other two are covers that will not match other editions <laughs> until we put out the other books. Yeah, yeah. And hey, it's often go by the, the, the figures, the 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm again. It's it's actually been fun. It, when, it, when it first, other than just, wow, that's a crazy number and time flies. I saw some of the, you know, the logos. And I was like, I don't need a 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm shirt. But now I, I get what they're doing and, it, and it's pretty fun to look back. So we will update you when uh, the other covers can be added to the <laughs> Central Legends collection. Final story of the day, Joseph. This is one that... Uh, there's other little things out there. There's delays of video games and all these kind of things. We kind of sift through some of that Star Wars news. I wanted to focus on this one here. Uh, and this is Jar Jar Binks and the Kenobi series. Ahmed Best says no. Now, a, a while ago, I can't remember now, there was that rumor. Uh, always, you know, always believe rumors. And yeah, look, sometimes there's a lot of truth in these rumors. We get that. There was the rumor that Jar Jar Binks with a beard or a goatee, uh, some facial hair, would be in the Kenobi series that was kind of going around and who knows, maybe <laughs> at one point that was the truth. Um, but with the casting announcement last week, someone, uh, there were some tweets or Ahmed best actually tweeted out like, Hey, you know, this looks awesome. Whatever. Some congratulatory, congratulatory words for the cast and, and the show itself. And a fan tweeted back, Oh, come on. Like, you're not going to be part of it. You know, you're hiding that good job, whatever it was. And he, he responded back very earnestly as uh, and honestly as I think Ahmed Best does with a lot of things in life. And and he and he said, Thanks for the love, but I will not be in this series as much as I would have loved to be part of it. But I'm ecstatic to see the folks who I love dearly back together doing great things. So that doesn't come as a surprise. But Joseph, I want to talk and uh, take this moment to talk about the appreciation for Jar Jar and a love for just Ahmed Best and Star Wars in general. It's very present. What do you think about Best? What do you think about the idea if he would have shown up in the Kenobi series? And let's talk about Jar Jar in 2021 and beyond. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, I agree with everything you said. I think this is, um, you know, uh, Ahmed Best's presence on social media has been one of just great honesty, which is really great. It is great that Jar Jar and Ahmed Best himself are being celebrated more. I would uh, I would love to see Jar Jar on screen again i like i really would like at different points in time it would have been the like mm. you know having more love and appreciation for jar jar but also having like a sense of irony of like how bonkers would that be you know and uh, like honestly totally sincerely no irony i think there's a lot of interesting things to do with the character and a lot of interesting places for him to show up um mm -hmm. for kenobi the kenobi show i could see a version of the storytelling where jar jar is somebody who who represents uh, that lost innocence uh, that Anakin once had that Obi Wan needs to connect with, or you know, if, if Jar Jar could be a figure to poke uh, Obi Wan about you know being a sort of an avatar of 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 Padme of you know of mm, yeah. Jar Jar wondering what happened to Padme and and Obi Wan having to sit with the guilt of I know what happened to her she her dying words were there's still 
good in him, you know? Yeah. Um, so I could see a narrative purpose for Jar Jar to kind of push on, on Obi-Wan's desire to try to uh, turn uh, Vader back to Anakin. I can also see like, yeah, but it's, it, that's, it's not necessary. Um, yeah. So for, for Jar Jar's actual presence in Kenobi, my, my mind goes to those two ways. It's not utterly preposterous, but it's also not, I don't see it as like narratively, of course it has to happen, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just think uh, uh, he, he's got, there, there are so many great Jar Jar questions. Like how long did he stay in the Senate? You know, mm -hmm. uh, does he question what happened with Padme? Um, we know in, in canon from the uh, Aftermath books that uh, by the time of the fall of the Empire, he is, you know, uh, hated. Uh, mm -hmm. because people now blame him for his part in handing power uh, to Palpatine. But in those those years between, you know, does he go back to Naboo immediately? Does he, where else is he? You know, if you're going after Aftermath, uh, he he agrees to to watch over that kid, right? So does he end up a out in the galaxy? You know, I think there's there are places in the timeline that would be interesting to have him appear. Yeah, and as far as the Kenobi series, I'm right there with you on um, with just what's announced and what's been you know, the speculation of what the series is about, but just who's in the series. Jar Jar almost could be like a bridge too far for me. Just like one more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just not it, remake episode one. <laughs> it, it's not about getting the band back together again, right? It's yes. about moving the story forward. Yeah. Um, but I totally it could work in some ways and all the things you're talking about. And, and, you know, Jar Jar's connection to young Annie is, 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 is potentially pretty powerful to, to mine. Like, like you're uh, talking about there with a lot of things around Jar Jar. So, as far as it, it in 2021 or beyond, which is why I, I phrased it that way, just I think now more than ever, I can see it happening for so many different reasons, not just in the Kenobi series, but finding the right way to to bring Jar Jar back. And, and I mentioned always the Wendag aftermath thing, but beyond that, just not not a five page epilogue of Jar Jar Binks, but just to actually have the character show up on screen. You could make it look good. You could make it um, look sharp. You could have the depth. Um, needed, especially for a generation that grew up with them, and now almost checking in on that generation of, hey, remember when uh, you all, uh, we jumped in a pod and raced together and we had a lot of fun and wasn't that exciting? Where are you now? How are you now as stars? You could really get some meta stuff going with Jar Jar. Um, the right way to do it, we'll find out if, if they're going to do it, but um, I just, again, would love, you know, Kellerman back, anything, give me more Ahmed in Star Wars. I think uh, he deserves it, and he's so, um, we're so in his corner, and you're right, so honest, just with who he is, his struggles, what he believes, what he's out there fighting for, everything, he's just so honest and sincere and and, and just loving. Um, so I'd love him um, to get some more spotlight in Star Wars, but uh, to conquer the big Jar Jar thing, I think, I think the fandom could be ready for it with the right project. Yeah, I think so. You know, I think there is just a, a great richness that I think is on screen, but also Wendig really tapped into of, yeah. you know, the misunderstood kind fool, you know, the, yeah. the tragic clown thing. It can be really powerful if done in the right way. Uh, and I'll just I'll, I'll throw out two pitches, Ken. I could see since Bad Batch is is a, you know, a bit of a sequel to the Clone Wars, mm. you know, and Jar Jar is not foreign to being in the Clone Wars. You know, mm. <laughs> the expulsion mm. of Senator Jar Jar. Yeah. <laughs> well, Representative yeah. Jar Jar would be very interesting. It, since that's what we're dealing with, that immediate transition. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then also, I, I this would have been kind of bonkers, you know, two years ago. But now that we got two seasons of The Mandalorian, We've seen that the Mandalorian does everything. The show does everything from, wow, the grittiest, baddest Boba Fett action that we always dreamed of. Uh, he, he's doing it for kindness and to, and to help uh, someone. But there's Luke Skywalker just, you know, using the force to just trash, <laughs> you know, uh, robots. Mm -hmm. um, they do the, the gritty hard. But then, you know, you got Pelimoto and, and you got pit droids doing shtick, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mandalorian. I could absolutely see an episode where it's, you know, a couple of years after uh, Aftermath and maybe Jar Jar got off Naboo and is getting his life together. And uh, <laughs> Mandalorian needs yet another ship repaired. And who's there to help him? Jar Jar Binks. Look, I got to tell you, I could see Dave. I could see him sitting there in that cowboy hat in the corner of an office going, my greatest challenge will be bringing Jar Jar back. And I'm, I, I want to do it. <laughs> I can yeah. see him doing it. 
All right. So uh, there you go. That's a look at Star Wars news. We're going to take a quick break. If you're listening on the YouTube version, you can catch the rest of the podcast on our podcast feed. But before we take a break, Joseph, we have an audio book recommendation. What we got? That's right. We are recommending Victory's Price by Alexander Freed, the final book in the Alphabet Squadron trilogy. We're going to be discussing that on our next deep dive show on Thursday. So if you want to give a listen before uh, to the book before listening to our episode, you should check it out. Uh, yeah, you should uh, check it out indeed uh, by using that uh, code audibletrial.com slash force center for your free audiobook. Audibletrial.com slash force center for your free audiobook. Help the show and help your ears. We're going to take a quick break on the other side. Your questions here on Force Center. <laughs> Hey, Force Center friends, make sure you're keeping up to date on all the great content from Jennifer Landa. Whether it's YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok, you whippersnappers, Force Center's own Jennifer Landa continues to bring you fun, informative, and insightful laughs and moments. Also, Jennifer brings her experience and perspective as a Star Wars loving mother to her DIY projects, blogs, and more. So be sure to head on over to JennyLanda.com. That's J E N I L A N D A.com for articles like how to make your own Darth Maul sneakers or 10 unique Star Wars baby gift ideas. Follow Jen on Twitter and Instagram at Jennifer Landa and on TikTok as Jennifer Landa1138. <laughs> Welcome back to Force Center, the 312th episode of the Big Show Main Show. Uh, we are on Superstar Star of our fleet, and we are about to answer the questions that you submit to us. Joseph, what we have. That's right. We've got some questions from Twitter and our patrons on Patreon, as always. We'll go to Twitter first. Uh, we have a question from Ray Skywalker. I thought she was a myth, which is a <laughs> great full handle name. Uh, Ray Skywalker, I thought she was a myth, asks... If Leia took on the name Skywalker, what would be the reason for her to do it? This is a, a great question that I think can we can kind of interpret uh, timeline wise. If there was any moment that Leia could have done that, uh, Organa Solo, uh, but uh, you know d doesn't have the full Skywalker on there. Uh, where do you go with this question? I, I think it would be any, anything that she learns after you know the the events of Return of the Jedi and learns more about her father and learns more. Um, I would say learn more, learns more about her brother. I mean, she spent a lot of time with him, but now that information's just been dropped on her too. Uh, it ain't that uh, plucky farm boy anymore. It, it's it's uh, your your blood, your relation. So it would come after that in my mind. Um, the, the 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 solo thing, obviously, we get that, but the Organa thing, it's like you just know that Leia wouldn't want to ignore that part of her life. But just for the sake of the of the conversation, the sake for the question, I I think that would be it. Is is as if she learned more what, or what she learned post return of the Jedi made her want to honor that family directly like that. And it's very clearly, she's still part of it and a key part of it, but um, that, that maybe that she felt, you know, this, this is, this is needed. Uh, this is maybe to take back the name from hmm. the, that legacy um, uh, as people, Again, Anakin. Who knows? Vader's Anakin. the The list is small, if if the list is uh, present at all. But if that was kind of part of the conversation, so who knows? Maybe maybe uh, after the uh, the events of Bloodline, she's like, oh, by the way, I'm going I'm going with Skywalker. I don't know. That would be where I would take that. Yeah, I'm starting uh, the Resistance, and I'm adding a name. Yeah, I, the names have such power. I think in 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 reality, that names just do have power. But also, I think in Star Wars storytelling, and Leia is fascinating to be like, of course, she is an Organa. That is mm -hmm. who she is. Those were her parents. They raised her. That's not, you know, going anywhere. Right. Um, for me, the the uh, using the solo name is so powerful, given uh, what we saw in the movie Solo. Um, no, it doesn't work for everybody. But this idea that, mm -hmm. you know his name was handed to him as kind of a an insult by a, just a bored guy who just wanted to get him the you know get his paperwork filled out uh but then 
Han made that name ring out in the galaxy first as, you know, a, a smuggler and a scoundrel and then as, you know, a war hero. And, and I can see Leia saying, your name matters. You made it mean something. And right. in fact, we're going to give it to our son, you know? Yeah. Uh, so there, there's storytelling to be had there. So Organa, Solo, it, it for me and my kind of headcanon, it, it's easy to imagine what those mean to Leia. Yeah. Skywalker, it's interesting that she would wrestle with. Like, obviously, I, I think she has nothing but, you know, love and admiration for her brother. But then there's, you know, the Anakin part of it. And then to her, does, does Skywalker represent... Uh, the path that she decided not to take. Like she kind of stayed on the Organa path and became uh, a politician and a leader. And t- to her is the Skywalker path symbolize if I turn my back on all that and, and went around the galaxy with Luke discovering the secrets of, of the force and started a temple. Is that, is that what that name means to her? You know? Yeah. So yeah. I feel like if she ever took it on, it would be because she tr- wanted to, really publicly fully embrace the sort of jedi part of her heritage the force sensitive uh, part of her for heritage um but with, with all that said the other the other thing i wanted to throw out there is i really there's a million things to like in the rise of skywalker novelization but one of them is that when she's leia's reflecting on her legacy She's sort of breaking it out by the names Organa, Solo, and Skywalker so that we see, you know, whether she used it or not, at least in that novelization, uh, there's this great picture that she is aware of the the weight of that part of her legacy and mm-hmm. it, it's important to her. Yeah, I, I'm just envisioning Sky, the Skywalker siblings' uh, School of Jedi Arts as... Uh... <laughs> Uh, no, uh, well answered. Uh, great stuff there uh, on that one, Joseph. Yeah, and I would I would be happy to go to uh, Camp Skywalker. Yeah, oh, totally. <laughs> great question, uh, Ray Skywalker. I thought she was a myth. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to Alejo. Alejo says, silly question. You just hit the big leagues in the fashion world, and you need to organize a fashion show. Any character is at your disposal. Who will you choose, and what will they wear? Again, uh, do you want to do you want to hit the fashion world first? Sure. Yeah. Look, there's um, there's a lot of candidates, and I think you go to some um, already some Star Wars fashion icons. I mean, Leia could could easily do that there too. Holdo comes to mind. Uh, Padme, of course. I mean, just Phantom Menace alone. Uh, I think Sabe, uh, uh, you, you could uh, do as well. I'm going outside the box here, though. I'm going Phasma. All right, I'm going Phasma. <laughs> you know, look. Gwendolyn Christie herself is known for Phasma, but more, of course, Grand of Tarth. Uh, um, and uh, it's uh, it's not a uh, it, it's, it's a character always covered in grime and a little grit of the series of the show and everything. Um, but Gwen, Gwendolyn Christie herself, all six two of, of hers, is uh, just this uh, wonderfully vibrant, uh, vivacious, gorgeous uh, uh, character and, and person. So um, I and, and this isn't a name drop. This is actually pointing the fingers back at us, going, "What the hell were we there?" There was a convention in like 2013 that the Schmoes gang was at, and we were next to her at like the at the autograph pit. And we were like, what are we doing? We're, we're nothing. And <laughs> she is just, you could, you could just, she emanates just so much energy and so much beauty and so much joy. So I think, could you find that in Phasma? Could you take the mask off? And, and uh, then also, I think also I'd, I'd love a Parnassus themed kind of warrior outfits for her, for her specifically to wear um, some kind of weird high fashion from the early nineties or something. Uh, that would be my challenge as a fashion designer, which, oh, by the way, I'm not. <laughs> yeah um this is so so great uh phasma was uh, uh on my list as well mm. <laughs> i think it's partially because Gwendolyn christie wears lots of really great uh fashion at all the various you know interviews uh you know uh, red carpets all that uh but yeah I, I wrote down phasma armor from a thousand worlds and i love the idea go. of phasma just uh, you know, uh, doing a great fashion show where it is just all the different ways that you can wear armor. Um, so Phasma is definitely on the list for me. Did you have other people on the list? Uh, I actually didn't. That was, uh, that was my choices. Uh, you know, I could think, uh, you know, well, La- look, Lando probably believes he belongs on the list and probably could very well uh, fit in on the list as well. Um, yeah, every every ship's ramp is a runway to uh, totally. to Lando. But I also was thinking, young Solo, that brooding kind of like he's like that 
Abercrombie and Fitch model at the door. <laughs> and it's sitting there, but doesn't want to be there. Oh, yeah, he would maybe pose for a photo shoot, but Han's not walking, yeah, right? He's not walking. He's not walking. He's not practicing the turn. <laughs> not at all. Uh, I, I had two others. Uh, one is, uh, honestly, the first one that came to mind is Poe Dameron. Um, mm-hmm. I can see like Poe doing a bunch of like really cool Star Wars-y uh, space suits that are based on flight suits. Like it's not a flight suit, but it is like a bright orange uh, suit <laughs> with like a white tie uh, that just evokes his flight suit. Uh, and then the other one that is very joke- jokey for me because I just really I was picturing like what kind of Star Wars character do I want to see uh, really traverse the runway? And I thought of a, a droidica just rolling. <laughs> And then it pops out and it's got some awesome fashion on. I get you. Okay. I love that. That might be the winner. <laughs> well, I think since we both went for Phasma, that is, uh, that's the will of the force. Uh, mm-hmm. Phasma for fashion. Yeah. All right. We move on to our questions from our patrons on Patreon. First one comes from Jonathan Curdy. John in- Jonathan says, greetings. Star Wars has a ton of hope and positive fun. However... There's also a lot of serious tragedy, lots of death, lots of oppression, lots of exploding planets. Uh, If you, Joseph or Ken, had the ability to travel from our reality into the reality of Star Wars at any point along the known Star Wars timeline, and your express purpose was to help prevent the most suffering possible, when and where would you go? Who would you attempt to contact, and how would you try to convince them to avoid the coming tragedies? Do you think you could succeed? And ultimately... Would you even try knowing that there's a happy ending in The Rise of Skywalker? Mm. I have my thoughts. Can't wait to hear yours. <laughs> this is a great, uh, complex question, Jonathan. Yeah. Uh, Ken, I, I'm so curious to see if we went to a similar place. I want to. I want you to start. Mm, I'd love to. I'd love Jonathan to start. We'll wait. Okay, he's not here. <laughs> um, so first of all, I, st- I start, it's an emotional spot for me. Um, this is what I call the, that final question of would you even try knowing there's a happy ending? It's, it's what I call the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind kind of thought of mm-hmm. all the pain and suffering maybe leads, leads to where you need to be. And, and I believe in that in life. But in this particular question, it's hard to turn away from billions dying on Alderaan. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to turn away from that. So that was my question. It's like, do you go to Alderaan? But then eh, then do you go to Maul and Qui-Gon and their battle? And do you try to, uh, you know, uh, keep Anakin uh, from not having that father figure and that spins it out? And then then I thought, well, then I think you need to go beyond that. I think you go back to Tatooine. This might be where I go. And uh, and uh, you you uh, tell Qui-Gon or you somehow free Shmi along with Anakin. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm not saying that stops the emperor, but you know, and I'm not saying that Vader was solely responsible for Alderaan, but it just seems like by then the empire is a well-oiled machine of evil and uh, Vader had a lot to do with that success. So if he's on course with his mother, does that change the course of everything? I'll try to go back to the absolute first flapping of the butterfly wing. And that's where I'm going to go. Am I successful? I, I think I can overpower Watto. <laughs> yeah that's true so you would you would just go and uh so for the answer of how you would do it you would go and violently threaten Watto to release me i'm not saying i'm a jedi joseph i'm not saying i'm a good person <laughs> i'm saying i'd punch him square in the face and say shmi you're, you're coming with us <laughs> yeah if he's a uh, if he's wearing his little hat that he has in uh, attack of the clones you're just gonna make that hat spin on his head right yeah, look and i kind of like Watto. i kind of always liked Watto. i kind of do but you know <laughs> Boom, right square in the jaw. I just really love, uh, it's, this is a totally valid answer. About the, how would you save the galaxy from pain? I would cold cock water. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'll take the hit. I'll take the moral hit for the rest of the galaxy, okay? I'll, well, be, your man. I'll be your dark knight. Well, and it's a good it's a good question uh, as we always struggle with the the morality, you know. And, and you know, you could say, Watto, uh, it, the entire galaxy depends on you releasing Shmi. Would you would you reason with him and try to pay him first, or would you just like literally tap him on the shoulder and bam? No, okay, yeah, no, you're right. I, I you know, the use of force continuums at play. I'd offer some money. I'd offer. I don't know if you can appeal to him, but that's just the thing. This he uh, he's a slave owner. Let's put Watto is a slave. I don't want to hide from that fact. No, that's a it's it's a dark true reality in service. That's what he is. But I do think he has some kind of 
just a little bit of affection for both of them in terms of like, uh, it ain't so bad, but I don't, I, again, I'm not, I'm not justifying anything with Watto. Um, so I would love to try to appeal to that one shred of morality that he might have left. I just don't think it would work. And then you'd have to pop him. <laughs> yes. And then, uh, in just, uh, by popping him, do you think he would, he would say, okay, okay, I'll, I'll release her. Oh, I'm knocking him out cold. And I'm telling me, grab your stuff, I'm getting on the starship. But you know, you got to take care of the, uh, the device. So she doesn't explode. Oh, okay. Your plot points. Uh, you, there's gotta be someone, there's gotta be a black market, uh, chip remover on, in, in Moss Aspen. Oh, there you go. There you go. I like, this is shaping up now to be a full Disney plus series. The first episode is you confronting yeah. Shmi. This is, this was that Stephen King series, November 20. Yeah, you know, this is, I'm trying to, I'm trying to stop some bad stuff here and, uh, you gotta, you gotta go uh, a little low to go high. Yeah. Well, this, this is so great. Um, because that was one of my alts. I didn't get as far as, uh, you know, cold cocking Watto, but that was one of my alts <laughs> was, uh, was freeing Shmi because mm -hmm. I think, you know, she, that's one of the great, you know, I think at the time it was released underrated parts of, uh, the Phantom Menace of uh, the clarity of, of her philosophy and how much she could pass that on, uh, to her son as well as just the, obviously the, you know, Anakin not experiencing the trauma of losing her makes a big, big difference. Um, yeah. Losing her by leaving her and then also literally when she dies. Uh, so I think that's a great one. I think my mind went to, though, uh, first, before I went to that alt, um, because we've been watching the the Clone Wars, we just watched that great two-part uh, Mandalorian arc about all of the pain that radiates out because of the Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. And it, it is really, the dark side is always there. Yeah. You know, there's always pain. There's always tragedy. You always got to cope with, uh, with loss and pain and find a way forward and all those things. But uh, Sidious and Palpatine, he so purposefully uh, uh, accelerates pain, mm -hmm. everything from, you know, the responsibility for the millions of lives lost in the Clone Wars, which did not, which is a war that did not have to happen to all of the horror of the Empire from Alderaan to Operation Cinder. He is the, you know, the thread that uh, needs to be unpulled to make sure that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, so I, if I could travel, I would get myself uh, to Coruscant mm -hmm. during the events of uh, the Phantom Menace. Okay. Uh, uh, Before, after Yoda and Mace have said you can't uh, change Anakin, but before uh, everybody leaves to go back to Naboo. And I would first approach uh, Yoda and Mace because they, they have the suspicion raised in their head that uh, maybe this dark side uh, presence that Qui-Gon encountered on Tatooine, maybe that could be the Sith. Mm. Yeti Mundi doesn't believe it. No, uh, no. But if I could get up to Yoda and Mace and say, yep, that is the the being that Qui-Gon encountered on Tatooine is absolutely a Sith and he's the apprentice mm. and get them to lean into me and go, okay, then who's the master? <laughs> and then say, it's Palpatine. And that's your problem. You know, you yeah. don't need to fight a war. You don't need to do anything but deal with Palpatine. Mm. And then since I was on Coruscant, I wouldn't trust just the Jedi to handle it. So I'd try to find Padme before she leaves for Naboo. There you go. And I would tell Padme uh, that that Palpatine it caused uh, the the blockade of Naboo and all this pain, and he he's lying to you. And I feel like between the Jedi and Padme, what what would be ideal is that they investigate Palpatine, right, and yeah. gather evidence, or you follow him around in his hood. <laughs> You know, watch where he goes and, you know, actually straight up arrest him uh, for conspiracy, treason, murder. And if he if he pulls his, uh, you know, uh, I am the Senate, uh, mm -hmm. he's not he, I am going to be the Senate at that point. And, you know, does his uh, his death spin over a desk at you. Well, if he needs to be taken down by the Jedi uh, by by defense at that point, so be it. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be so healing for the galaxy to basically have like Padme Amidala. <laughs> successfully you know uh Love it. by the laws get him arrested for the actual crimes of conspiracy treason murder <laughs> lying to the senate you know all whatever all the laws are uh in star wars land 
He's already in Phantom Menace, broken many, many laws. Well, what I love about this is there's a potential chance that you get to pop Palpatine in the face, which, you know, I just clearly love violence. No, um, but if, if he... No, I would I would sock Sidious for sure. Sock Sidious. If he does pull the, I'm about to be the Senate, um, it, it's it's a far different scenario than Revenge of the Sith, where it's chaos and just uh, you, the war's been fought and you, the Jedi have been behind the eight ball. And now they just found out the truth too, almost too late. Um, you know, now you can bring 60 Jedi to the office. <laughs> yeah. And he has corrupted the courts at that point, you know, yeah. It, it, yeah. they're, they're just going to let him off, you know, and yeah. maybe he's done that already, but hopefully not. Yes. There you go. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And C- Sidious might be, be able to wiggle his way out from, you know, the Jedi or Padme, but I don't think both. Yep. Not if they know, uh, not if he's exposed, not if light is exposed on him. All of the horrible things he does to start the Clone Wars, build the Empire, uh, he does because he can hide in darkness and manipulate himself. And if the light gets shined on him, he's in trouble. Yeah, uh, love that. So I, I do want to uh, revisit uh, the end of Jonathan's great question. His final question is, would you try? Um, we're having lots of fun uh with this but that gets to that deep philosophical question of you know can you change the past should you try to change the past even if you know you could save billions of lives potentially would you try i yeah i think i think you have to again i you know i make the example of um eternal sunshine spot this minor relations but it's just a way way different thing man and and there's more at stake and and uh, you know alderaan and, and, and i mean we know in the star wars stories uh, there's many many deaths that, that come out of all this stuff there i, I think you have to i think you have to because then um the future is uh, uh un, unwritten and and not to sound like uh, terminator 2 here at the end uh but the future is unwritten and then you can still work for that happy ending and, and maybe you don't need that happy ending you have a different one yeah, yeah, and maybe Anakin is still the chosen one, and maybe at nine years old, he's a uh, he he's the one who, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not to wish a child uh, murdering Palpatine, but yeah. you know, yes. maybe he's still maybe he is still the one who makes a difference because yeah. that's fate. Yeah, I, I love this question. I think it is such a a, a deep question. Um, a lot of different storytelling I like has has tackled it in di- from different perspectives, like the. Uh, end game time travel uh, is predicated on what you and I are talking about of like how, uh, yes, it's a risk, but how could we not, how, how could we look at this, the knowledge that we have the possibility to save billions and not try mm-hmm. um, the uh, third season of twin peaks then give spoilers if anybody hasn't seen it and wants to, but it, it does wrestle with uh, these very star Wars like themes of uh, sometimes you just have to accept that something bad has happened and you have to move forward uh, and that you you might only do more damage by being unwilling to accept the past and trying to control it. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I, and I, I love how Star Wars wrestles with it. I love how different Star Wars characters yeah. feel um, that, uh, you know, the world between worlds is, is, is a clear example of this, of, yeah, the the effort to to rescue Kanan is is a manipulation. He, yeah, you know, you need to be able to Ezra needs to be able to to let go. So I think I think there's there's a part of me of like I probably would never travel back in my own life as tempting as it would be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if it really was like, hey, a galaxy that uh, has never been a different reality that you've never been a part of needs your help, that might be different for me. Yeah, a little easier. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. so thanks for the uh the awesome. uh, both practical and philosophical thoughts jonathan yeah. those are great right Love okay it. and you know we we haven't been adding a lot of t-shirts uh but if we need a cold cock water or a, <laughs> a sock Sidious t-shirt we'll we'll look into it we'll look into it, we'll look into <laughs> probably it. not going to yeah though i'll tell you disney lucasfilm has been uh, a little more uh tighter on what shirts are out there in the world i'll tell you that much uh, that that is a uh, yes that is a uh, understandable because <laughs> yeah, yeah. there were uh, there were definitely some shirts of like uh really N- not even ours other people's yes uh, yeah they're like i you can do that 
Oh, okay. Yeah. You can't. You can't. Uh, all right. All right. Moving on. Moving on uh, uh, from the, the Disney control of T-shirts to our final question from Tim Langle. Tim says, uh, with Obi-Wan returning, it's time to dive back into the wonderful world of galactic facial hair, uh, noting that no human can possibly hope to match the glory of Chewie's mane, who sports the best beard, mustache, stubble, sideburns, etc., in the galaxy. Ooh, that is a good one. Yeah. Uh, Ken, uh, would you like to start? Uh, yeah. First of all, you know, stubble, it, it might be Watto and Attack the Clones right before I pop. Um, <laughs> that is definitely, there, there's two kinds of stubble in pop culture and maybe in reality, there's the like, uh, I am a master of razors and I, I make the yeah. choice to aesthetically not shave for exactly the right amount of time to have awesome stubble versus my life has fallen apart. <laughs> yeah, <that's> a- <laughs> and Watto is definitely my life fell apart stubble. Yeah, I've, I've had more of that in my life. Um, this is the answer. I went, and, and, and I have to admit, it's so fresh in my um, head that this is probably why it popped in. I mean, there's a lot of great sideburns, you know, callus, you got the chops. I think that look. I think that Obi Wan beard is is uh, is popular for a reason. There's a lot of choices, but I'm going to Rogue One, Joseph, Ooh. and Private Tenzigo Weems. And I, yes, I had, I had to make sure I, I had to look up his name uh, right before we recorded. He is the uh, uh, Rebel Signals Intelligence Technician uh, working um, in the uh, base there in Yavin Four. He's uh, all through uh, the movie, but he's uh, my favorite part is where he gets the message. Uh, of, uh, uh, of of what's going on on Scarif and has to run to Mon Mothma and the, the guards almost stop him and he's just like, uh, Mon, 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 intercepted Imperial Remissions, ma'am. Rebels are on Scarif. And he's that dude. And his mustache, it is, uh, it's a retired cop push broom, Ned Flanders style mustache made more <laughs> powerful. If you look up his uh, uh, visual encyclopedia photo or just go to, to like Wikipedia and type in 10 Zigo Weems, He's got his hands in his pocket, <laughs> his back arched, his face forward, and just he he ain't taking no guff. And that mustache takes no guff. And that's why I love it. He it, it just it's he's become one of my favorite little characters. Um uh background or not, and you know, we just did the the Star Wars ranked on, on background weirdos. I, I don't quite consider him a, a weirdo. He's a cr- Star Wars crusty curmudgeon. Um, but he's got, you know, he does important uh, he does important work there. And I think the mustache just has um, has the gravitas needed for a man like him. Uh, yeah, no, I, I pulled him up on uh, Wikipedia and I'm looking at this photo. This might be one of the greatest just <laughs> file photos of a character. You're right. Just that he, he is not resting his hands in his pockets. He has his hands in his pockets so he doesn't do violence to whoever he's listening to. Right. <laughs> and, and actor Eric McLennan. Uh, is the guy portrayed? I love that they were just like, "Hey, we we need some uh, like uh, photos of your character. Could you just pose like your character?" And he was like, "I got it." <laughs> yeah, I mean, he looks like somebody like just a great down to earth person who's been working the same job for like twenty years, knows exactly how to how to do it, and yeah. then he's like listening to the uh, the new twenty four year old manager <laughs> yeah. tell him. Tell him how to do it. And he'd look like, that's not going to work. That's not going to work, you young fool. Yeah. Like, that's his total vibe. And he, 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 that, that mustache is great. It's definitely like, you were born with that. Like, as a baby, you had that mustache, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He came out with that one there. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So that's, that's my answer. That's my answer. It's a relatively new one. Totally admit it's fresh in my mind. We just watched Rogue One and took a deep dive into it, but I can't escape that power, that mustache. Oh, I'm glad because, yeah, Tenzigo Weems uh, was not on my radar, but I'm going to try to keep him there now. Um, yeah, for Stubble, uh, yeah, I, I, this is predictable. But, yeah, it's Poe Dameron's Stubble is, is hard to beat. That's the, you know, the other side of the galaxy from Watto's Stubble. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, very high quality Stubble. Uh, for best mustache, I'm also just going to go classic Lando Calrissian. Come That's on. That's true. Come on. That's true. Uh Best beard is just a a, a duel uh, between uh, Obi Wan Kenobi and Luke on Octo, but I gotta give it to, mm. to Luke's Octo beard. That's pretty good, uh, yeah. Because it's, it, it's it's an assertive beard. It's a beard that says I've seen some crap. It, it's yeah. some beard that almost literally says "Don't talk to me." Like yeah. he weaponizes that beard when he he dribbles <laughs> <laughs> the Thalassiren milk to say uh, this beard means yeah, don't talk to me. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've that. seen some crap. The, the The beard is both wisdom and leave me alone. It's yeah, it's too powerful. I can't ignore it. Yeah, no, I lo- I love that beard. And I, I um, I I I, you know, we, you and I both have uh, 
are in this weird spot in facial hair where it's like, you know, our beards have changed colors. <laughs> yes, they have. And while the salt and pepper and sometimes just the salt uh, can uh, is what generally well received in society. Uh, we men definitely have it easier. We get that. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, I got I got a newfound confidence for what was happening with my facial hair with, with Mark Hamill showing up in the world with that one. And uh, <laughs> and then I see the movie and I'm like, oh, I, I, I love it even more because I, too, want you to leave me alone. And this beard tells you. <laughs> um, so, yes, I'm there for that. Could be wise, could be grumpy, could be somewhere in between. That is a great beard. And then the final thing for me, sideburns, uh, Boshek, you know, the the man who turned down uh, giving Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker a ride and <laughs> yep. and pointed him to Chewie. Uh, gotta be Boshek. Those are like, I think it's partially because his hair is slicked back. So the hair is all back and <laughs> the sideburns are all forward. Oh, man, that's a that's a look. That's a choice. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a it's a solid choice from Bocek. So there we go. Another episode, Ken, where we get to see the just great variety of uh, of questions we get that I think uh, represent what we love about Star Wars. It goes all the way from the absolute depth to the uh, the moral imperative or not to travel in time and intervene in fate itself to best sideburns and everything in between uh so thank you all for those questions uh thank you uh to jonathan and tim and alejo and ray skywalker i thought she was a myth great names great questions great fans and if you want to reach out or find us and just say hi you can do so on twitter at four center pod we're on instagram youtube as well facebook page is four center podcast podcast available in a lot of different spots housed on anchor but it's available on iheart radio apple podcast google podcast stitcher tune in amazon music and spotify so if you're there listening to cool rock and roll singles slide on over to the podcast check us out there uh, we also got merch. What is left of merch is available on teampublic.com slash user slash force center. Uh, grab a shirt before Bob Iger says no. Uh, Patreon.com slash force center is where you can support us directly. You can follow me at Ken Napsack or go to my website, KenNapsack.com uh, for more information, all the things I do, including uh, working with the fine folks at the GPA, the Good People Association at the GPA.fun. Uh, still highlighting right now the Colorado Healing Fund at ColoradoHealingFund.org. Uh, check out there if you want to support directly to some of the uh, uh, recent uh, tragedies of the, over there uh, and just uh, get more information in, uh, in yourself there. So uh, that's for me. Joseph, what do you have? Yeah, you can find me Twitter and Instagram at Joseph Scrimshaw. And you can check out my website, josephscrimshaw.com, for links to uh, all my other stuff, some comedy albums, uh, future comedy shows, uh, my other podcast, Obsessed. Uh, this week, uh, my wife and I are going to discuss uh, Godzilla versus Kong, which we watched and enjoyed just a big monster fight fun. So we'll be discussing that on Obsessed. Links to all that stuff on josephscrimshaw.com. Uh, and the thing I'd like to highlight uh, this week, uh, while also well, seconding Ken's great recommendation, uh, I also want to remind you about a service, uh, an activity called Vote Forward. Their website is the word vote and then fwd.org. This is a great experiment about encouraging people to vote. It is nonpartisan. You write and you just encourage people to use the power that we all have, uh, which is to vote. Uh, they're doing a campaign right now thanking voters uh, who, who got out to vote and, and seeing if that encourages people to uh, continue to vote. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out, at, like I said, at votefwd.org. Do that. Check it on out. Another fun episode. We're ready for the Bad Batch, Omega, and of course, more Tarkin. So for all of them and all of you, we'll see you next time here on Force Center. Yeah.